Welcome aboard Clipper New York. Before we begin our tour of the interior, we'd like to remind you once again that aircraft equipment is designated left or right when facing the front of the aircraft, and seat rows are numbered forward aft. Our Airbus A300 has eight exit doors. There are four on the left called L1 through L4, and four on the right called R1 through R4. Our A300 offers two classes of service, first class and cabin class, and has three zones, A, B, and C, on one cabin level. Here at the L1 entry door, you see the L1 primary jump seat. Since this is the purser location, it has some master control panels, including the passenger entertainment and music control panel, and the lighting control panel. It also has an interphone similar to those at the other primary jump seats. Directly across from this jump seat is the L1 alternate jump seat. This jump seat has no interphone or controls, and so it is to be used only when the L1 primary jump seat is occupied. Here behind this wall is the first class lavatory. Forward on the aircraft is the cockpit door. And directly above these two doors in the ceiling is the forward circuit breaker panel. Here on your right is the bulkhead. In front of here, you'll set the first class bar cart for the first class bar service. On future aircraft, this will be replaced with an auxiliary bar unit. To your left is the first class galley 1A. It has ovens, stowage locations, coffee makers, circuit breaker panel, additional stowage locations, a spigot, sink, a waste bin, and cart stowage locations beneath the galley counter. Also note the secondary cart latches. Here by the R1 door is the R1 jump seat. Note the interphone location. To your right, we'll move into the first class cabin. The first class cabin holds 26 passengers in non-sleeperette seats. The seats are arranged in a 2-2-2 configuration and are lettered AB on the left, EF in the middle, and HJ on the right. Above each seat is an individual reading light switch, the flight attendant call button, and located in the armrest is the seat recline control button and the passenger tray table. Overhead, you see bins. They run both in the center and along the sides, and they run the entire length of the aircraft. Here at the back of the cabin is the mid-lavatory. It has a unique curtain track that allows it to be designated either for first-class use or by moving the curtain, it can be designated for cabin-class use. Here on the left side of the cabin is the first-class closet and storage location. Here in the supper compartment, we will be housing the in-flight entertainment video system when it is installed on this aircraft. Directly behind this cabin is our mid-galley complex. Here between doors L and R2 is the mid-cabin galley complex. It's comprised of two modules, galley G2 and galley G3, and it serves part of cabin class. Since these two modules are very similar, I'll simply point out some of the equipment in galley G2. There's a refrigerator, coffee makers, circuit breaker panel, stowage locations, ovens, a water spigot, sink, and a waste bin. Beneath the counters are cart stowage locations. On a future aircraft, galley G3 will be removed and replaced with a bulkhead. Behind me is jump seat at the L2 door. Note the location of the interphone, and above the jump seat are the lighting control panel for the galley and B zone. As we move aft, we enter cabin class B zone. Cabin class begins with B zone, which holds 150 passengers. Seats are arranged in a 2-4-2 configuration, which is nice because no passenger is further than one seat from the aisle. Seats are designated AB on the left, DEFG in the center, and HJ on the right. Each seat has an individual reading light above, and a flight attendant call button. Seat recline control buttons are located in the armrest. 
and the passenger tray tables for the first row of seats in B zone are located on the bulkhead, while the remainder of the seats have their tray table in the seat back. As we move further aft, we'll enter C zone. As we move from B into C zones, we pass a storage compartment behind the last row of seats and the L and R3 jump seats. This jump seat is immediately next to a passenger seat, and so this seat is designated last assigned. There is an interphone behind the jump seat, and in addition to other standard equipment, at the L3 jump seat, there is a temperature control knob immediately below the interphone. Behind me is C-Zone, which is the last cabin of this aircraft. C-Zone holds 75 passengers and is again arranged in a 2-4-2 configuration, except for the last few rows of seats, which are configured 2-3-2. Two, two. Immediately behind this cabin is the large cabin class galley complex. Between doors L and R4, we have the aft galley, which serves the majority of cabin class. It's comprised of two modules, galley G5, which is the forward side, and is essentially a stowage location with cart storage location beneath the counter. Galley G4 has all the electrical equipment, including ovens, coffee makers, circuit breaker panel, stowage locations, water spigot, sink, and a waste container. It also has cart locations beneath the counter. Also here at the back of the airplane, we have the two primary jump seats, L and R4, and the alternate R4 jump seat. The L and R4 primary jump seats are a swiveling and collapsible type, which open like this. The inner phone is in a compartment in front of the jump seat. Just opposite this jump seat at the R4 door is an alternate jump seat which has no interphone or controls and so it's only to be used when this jump seat is occupied. Again at the back of the airplane we have four cabin class lavatories, two on each side. The two labs at the very back of the airplane have sliding doors which allow easy access by handicapped passengers. So in review our Airbus A300 holds 26 passengers in first class and 225 in cabin class. Your instructor will now review some of the equipment we have gone over in greater detail.